So you want the fastest way to become a self-taught cloud engineer and get a job, but you don't even know where to start. You know, what skills do you need? How do you actually land your first role? Now, five years ago, I quit my job and landed a new one as a cloud engineer in just three months. Since then, I've helped more than 400 students make the switch to the cloud. I was able to build a system that I like to call the cloud trifecta, which I will share with you shortly. But if I was starting all over again, here is the exact five step roadmap that I would follow, starting with step number one, learning IT fundamentals. And there is five key areas. First up, operating systems, the software that manages everything. Think of it like Mac OS or Windows. In the cloud, Linux dominates, so you'll need to get comfortable with the command line. Learn how to navigate directories, manage files, and write basic shell scripts. Next, you wanna dive into networking and understand how computers communicate with each other. IP addresses, subnets, DNS, and basic routing. Security is crucial too. And it's not something to just bolt on at the end like most people think and do. Learn about firewalls that control network traffic, VPNs that create private protected connections, as well as data encryption at rest and in transit. Anything that we build as cloud engineers has to be secured from the ground up because there's a lot at stake. Next, you'll need to get a good understanding of databases. Think of all of the customer information or transaction records that need to be stored somewhere for people to run queries on. You'll need to know how to set up these databases, both relational and non-relational. Finally, virtualization, the backbone that makes cloud computing possible in the first place by creating multiple virtual machines from one physical server. It's easy to get distracted when you're self-learning, but focusing on these fundamentals will give you the foundation that you'll need to move forward. Now, from here, you'll need to pick and learn one of the three major cloud providers, AWS, Azure, or GCP. And there's absolutely no need, in my opinion, to master all three of these, especially when you're just starting out. Now, if I were you, I would choose AWS because they're the largest provider on the market, which means more job opportunities for you. And they also have an extensive free tier so you can experiment and build projects. Now, it's important to know that everything that you learn on AWS transfers easily to GCP and Azure. It's all the same. They just label them differently with different names. Step three, you want to master key AWS services. You see, AWS actually has over 200 services, but the fastest way for you to get a job is to narrow your focus down to just five. Otherwise, everything will just be overwhelming. So focus on EC2 for compute, S3 for storage, IAM for identity access management, VPC for your private space in the cloud. And because it's 2025, companies are also looking for cloud engineers who know how to leverage AI. So you will need to master Amazon Bedrock as well. And what about about coding. I actually get this question asked all of the time. And while as a cloud engineer, you don't need to be an expert programmer, it's crucial to learn Python and Bash as well as infrastructure's code using Terraform. Because quite frankly, if you wanna stand out from the competition while everyone else is building projects by clicking around the AWS console, also known as ClickOps, you'll build systems using Python and Terraform, which mirrors the approach that cloud engineers use in the real world. And this is where I recently discovered Twingate, who've kindly sponsored this video. Their tool integrates security directly into your infrastructure's code through Terraform, turning security from a separate system into a core part of your infrastructure. Your services stay private and protected while remaining easily accessible for distributed teams and developers, which is essential in today's remote work environment. Now, Twingate really solves that frustrating challenge of securing distributed systems without creating friction for developers. You can check out Twingate in the description below. And thanks again for Twingate for sponsoring this video. Now, before we get to building your project portfolio in step number four, it's important to mention that a lot of people still get stuck thinking that they need to learn Kubernetes or be an expert with Docker. The thing is, as a beginner, you can't possibly learn every technology and for entry level positions, it's certainly not necessary to learn Kubernetes, but you should have an understanding of what containers are and how to use them to package up our applications and then deploy them to the cloud. As well, well, you'll need to learn how to build CI/CD pipelines using GitHub Actions or Jenkins in order to automate software deployment. This comes back to my point earlier around AI. AWS and basically every single company is very much an AI company in 2025, and these skills will help you leverage AI and automation into your day-to-day -day work as a cloud engineer, boosting your efficiency and your ability to get tasks done. That brings me to step number four 
building your cloud project portfolio. A strong portfolio of cloud projects, not certs or computer science degree, is the key to demonstrating your abilities to potential employers. You have to learn by doing instead of watching theory or endless tutorials on YouTube. You can't build practical skills watching someone else. You have to do it yourself. And I know that sounds obvious, but a lot of people still do not understand this. I have loads of videos on my channel giving you project ideas that solve real problems. Instead, here is three reasons why most portfolios get ignored. Number one, no one can actually tell what you've built. Number two, it's not clear what technologies that you've used and why. And number three, there are no explanations of the problem that you've solved or the trade-offs that you've made. So how do you avoid these mistakes? Now, with each project, you wanna clearly explain what you've built, which technologies that you've used and why, and the specific problems that you've solved. Create a video walkthrough explaining your work, the problem that you solved, the trade-offs that you've made using something like Loom. This is a great way to stand out because most people are afraid to put themselves out there. Be sure to include clear documentation and GitHub repositories for your projects alongside your video walkthroughs. This approach will put you at the very top of applying for jobs. Now, at this point, you are ready for step number five, applying for jobs. I will share my cloud trifecta system in a moment, but first we need to strategize your job search. I recommend using LinkedIn jobs Jobs, which is constantly updating with new job openings. I'd stay away from platforms like Indeed. Make sure you have a professional looking photo and your headline clearly states that you are a cloud engineer in your specific cloud platform, AWS cloud engineer, for example. Now, when applying, have one resume that's a little bit more generic, highlighting most of your skills, but don't only use this one. Instead, you want to have two or three versions of your resume and you're going to look in job descriptions for exactly the skills that they require from you before you apply and then tailor your resume for that. If a job specifically mentions Terraform and CI/CD pipelines in the description, then make sure your project portfolio and resume highlights these exact skills with examples that demonstrate your expertise. You have to remember that all these hiring managers and recruiters are just trying to filter out the bad applications because they can't interview 100 people for this job. It's not anything against you personally or your skills. It's just a little game that you have to play in order to get your foot in the door and actually get an interview. Now, when it comes to applications. You can't improve what you don't measure. Now in finance, they tell you to track your expenses so you can see where your money's going every single month. In the same way, you should track your job applications. Now most job seekers don't do this. They apply, wait, and just hope. But hope isn't a strategy. So Let's systemize it by creating a spreadsheet and logging every single role that you apply for, the hiring managers, rejections, follow-ups needed, which resume version you use, and interviews that you've secured. Now, after a couple of weeks, you'll see patterns emerge showing which jobs or resume versions are more successful, allowing you to double down on those approaches. You might say that this is too overwhelming or too granular, but if you don't know your application to interview rate, maybe cloud engineering isn't for you. We need to be analytical about everything including our job search. Now, in terms of the roles, apply for entry-level positions like cloud support engineer, cloud network engineer, junior cloud engineer, even DevOps engineer, or any adjacent tech entry-level role. Now look, as a self-taught cloud engineer, the journey isn't going to be easy. I've been there myself, having worked in tech for over a decade and now helping over 400 students learn the cloud and consulting for tech companies. I've discovered that success boils down to one thing, a consistent daily routine that helps you achieve your goals. That's why I've developed a system that you could implement starting today. And I call it the cloud trifecta. It breaks down everything that you need to do in manageable chunks that won't overwhelm you. And here is how it works. You want to commit just one hour each day to all these three areas. Firstly, one hour of learning cloud fundamentals, whether that's Linux, AWS, or building projects. Secondly, you want to spend one hour applying for jobs. And this is crucial. Start applying after just three weeks of learning. Don't wait until you feel ready because that day might never come. Remember, it takes an average of 34 days from your application to hire. So the sooner that you start applying, the better. Thirdly, one hour of building your personal brand because being out of sight means out of mind. Connect with other professionals in tech, document your projects in public, and 
and share what you are learning. I see too many people getting stuck in the perfectionism trap, endlessly learning but never applying. Or they have the skills but they remain invisible to employers. Some are just paralyzed by the fear of rejection. Now this trifecta approach is tried and tested because it forces you to confront these barriers through daily action. And I'm a big believer in learning by doing so you start implementing today so you can build your own momentum. And if you want a detailed breakdown of all the projects and skills that you need, then click right here so you can watch my complete cloud engineer roadmap for 2025. Good luck.